my knowledge of Oscar Wilde up until now was limited to the importance of being earnest that I must have seen as a movie when I was a child, a black and white movie, uh, The Portrait of Dorian Gray, and the other great work that I knew, Salome. I didn't, I didn't know that much about about him. I, I knew, you know, rumors about his scandalous life. He was just such an interesting thing that would probably not happen today. And esthete, esthet, um, I don't know, a sort of a strange mixture of, of uh, uh, art critic and all these. I don't know, it's just his whole life has been revealed to me through the study of his persona for this for this project Of course, the centrally fascinating things about this um, just art song repertoire in general, but it's something that also that Mike does so well, is the the way that a good composer can not only um, enhance the meaning of the poem, but even fundamentally change it sometimes if he chooses to. or to provide a, um, a very different way of thinking about the poem or of interpreting the poem based on what's going on in, in, in the music. Becoming more acquainted with Wilde's poetry um, has certainly deepened my appreciation for him, but hasn't made him really any less enigmatic in my mind. He still remains a very fascinating figure, and um, I think, like any great artist or poet, the things which he expresses are things which are valid in any time and age. Well, I would just say that I think this, the both of these works, the Wild and the Franchetti, are pieces which should hold a very prominent place in the musical repertoire. I mean, there's nothing really comparable Mark to Mike these. Yeah. There's nothing really nothing. And Wild has like so rarely been set to yes. music, apparently. So yeah, it's a uh, it's a mammoth work. It's a yeah. great achievement. Mm -hmm.
my choice, I've lived my poems and youth's scarred, wasted days.